I'm Jen, and I've been teaching in BCSE for the several years, and before that, I taught in Bloomington, Indiana. So I'm from Indiana, Midwest kind of kid. Um, this is my, I think, 22nd or 23rd year in education, and my master's degree is in educational leadership, so there may be admin in my future, I'm not sure. But right now I'm teaching and I'm coordinating senior projects, and my uh, subject matters health, and then I also do an online PE class, and I do an online health class. So I do a little bit of everything, kind of a jack of all trades. And this is my colleague, Anne, so I'll let her introduce herself. Thank you, Jen. And we're both um, teachers with BCSC, Bartholomew Consolidated School Corporation. Jen's at one high school with approximately 2,000 students. My high school has approximately 1,600 students. Um, I've been the senior project coordinator for 20 years now. We've been doing senior projects for 20 years. And um, I have a background in public relations and business and a teaching certification in journalism. And uh, there's a huge community component to our senior projects, which we will explain. And we'll see that it, it was a good blend for me as far as my business background and education because of being uh, working with students and then as well working with the business community and the, um, the whole community connections piece of senior projects. So we're going to be sharing some of our students' stories and the great work they've done. We're going to give you the, the pieces as far as the specifics of what's involved in senior projects. So uh, we have a lot of information to share. So with that, so we'll start off with our goals. Basically, by the end of this session, we're hoping that you'll be able to see how the UDL framework connects with senior projects. So they really fit well together. And it's, it's a really nice connection. And so we'll take you through kind of the why we do senior projects, what we do, and how we do it, and hope that you can take something, some piece of it, and implement it in a way that is useful to you and that helps you. So that's the second part is to um, process how the senior projects engage students and improve the expert learner outcomes, removing barriers for all students. So one of the beautiful things about senior projects is it's a graduation requirement for every student in BCSC. And as a result of this, there can't be barriers because you have students in life skills class doing senior projects and you have AP students and we have to make sure that their project is a learning stretch for them. And it's really an amazing fit. It's, it's really exciting. We're excited to be here and tell you about it. So we all want to know why we're doing uh, anything that we're assigned to do, whether it's personally or professionally, but I think it will be beneficial to you if I give you a little bit of the background. I'll try to be succinct as far as why we even started senior projects at BCSC. And it all started back in the late 1990s. The Columbus Economic Development Board commissioned the Hudson Institute to do a study on the future of the economic uh, climate for Columbus, Indiana. And what the study found was that there was a concern for having enough prepared workers for the automated manufacturing positions and the technology jobs that were being created. So as a result of the concern for how are we gonna make sure students are prepared, there was a task force that was formed and it's called the Community Education Coalition and it's still in existence. And the Community Education Coalition is comprised of um, educational leaders, post-secondary representation and business and industry leaders. And they met at the very beginning to say, okay, how do we address this? How are we gonna get our students prepared? And the business and industry leaders all said, we have a great idea. Let's have another paper pencil exit test. And all, exactly, exactly what all the educators yes. said, no, please, we do enough of that. So um, our administrators in, in my building said, how about if we send teams of teachers throughout the country to look at best practices, to see what's happening out there, and maybe take 
whatever parts and come up with a new way for students to learn and be able to demonstrate what they know and what they have learned over their formal years of schooling. So there were teams of teachers that went to various locations throughout the United States. I personally was fortunate enough to travel to the West Coast to Medford, Oregon, and saw senior projects in practice. They had been doing them on the West Coast for probably 10 years. So they were very skilled and helpful. So there were five of us that went, went back to our building and told the administrators, hey, we think we've found what we need here. You know, and gave the details and the administration said, let's, let's present this to the faculty, see what kind of read we get. Faculty said, hey, this sounds good. Let's go with this. And then we presented to the juniors who would be seniors the following year. And this was in the spring of the year. It was about this time of year that I went out to Medford, Oregon. And then we went back to the juniors and said, hey, who wants to do a different way of learning? Who wants to maybe select what it is you're going to be learning about? And about half the class said, hey, I'm in. So um, with the class of 2000, our pilot year, we started with about half the class. It went so well, and everybody was really enthused about it, that on May the 8th, the year 2000, our um, school board of trustees, they took a vote and they took action and said, we want this to be curriculum, and every student will do senior project, and it will be required for them to graduate. And the reason, the why the school board wanted to go with this is because Senior projects keep students engaged in their learning through their entire senior year. It makes the senior year meaningful and relevant for the students because they're selecting, they're picking what they're working on, and it also makes sure that there's a level of rigor throughout the senior year. So that was the reason our school board said this is what we're going to do, and since um, May the 8th, 2000, it's been school board policy. Now, moving in the direction of why, let's narrow it down a little bit more. We know why the school board wants to do this. We want to show you a very short video about a student and her why for senior projects, because it's really important that a student be able to be articulate in their reasoning, their motives, and why they select the senior project they do, because it is their choice. Um, Okay, we'll get this video going here. And this is Olivia. Olivia's a senior at my school. I knew I wanted to incorporate um, one of my favorite teachers in it because um, when my dad passed away, I was in her class, and she just made sure like I passed the class and got me through even that grade school and even on past that. She helped me through middle school and even the beginning of high school. And um, I've still talked to her today, and we still know each other. Um, and I just wanted to like repay her in a way for the kindness and gratitude that she gave me. Um, and I didn't really know what I was going to do, but I knew I wanted to do something along the lines of education and giving back to the school. So I decided that I was going to collect school supplies for the school she works at, which is the school I went to. Um, and so I went through and we decided what kind of supplies we wanted. And we um, came up with a list and I advertised. I had local businesses donate. And I had bake sales to raise all the money for that. Um, we raised about $2,000 from that, and I purchased a bunch of school supplies, way more than I ever thought I was going to get. Um, and when I repaid that, I gave them um, a date that I, each teacher could come and collect all the supplies. Um, and that was in late February, and I started collecting in September. So um, if you could just imagine all the supplies that we got from that, there was a lot. Um, and in February, we met and we, I gave out all the supplies. It took us about three hours to set everything up. Um, I had my family and friends help me, and without them, I seriously could not have done this um, project. It was just so big. Um, we had a ton of supplies to set up and for the teachers collect, to collect. And that day, um, they collected all the supplies, and they were just ultimately shocked at how much there was when they walked into the building and saw all of those supplies. And so. With being able to choose what we wanted to do with our project, it was really a great turnout with my project, and I just really was overwhelmed and um, very proud of myself for being able to do that for the community. 
So Olivia had a very powerful reasoning behind her senior project and um, she was very motivated and keep in mind she wanted to get enough supplies for one teacher. She ended up getting enough for the entire school building and every teacher. Now this is a relatively small elementary. There's one grade K through six, but she had enough supplies for seven teachers and she was hoping to get enough for one teacher. So we want you to just, with your elbow partner, just talk about the power of um, Olivia's motivation and why and how she decided what to do for her senior project and then just think about what your why might be if you would do senior projects. So just take a couple minutes to kind of pair up here naturally and then we'll we'll keep moving. So, Or you could even do one large group. We also we also have if you'd rather to, oh well, let's let him talk. <laughs> we give them? We're already almost at 1130. Okay. Sorry, I talked too long. No, you're fine. I think it's good to get back. I'll give you guys about 30 seconds to kind of wrap up. Okay, I wanted to give you another option too. You don't need to, it seems like you all talked really well. So sometimes if I was teaching this in a health class, my students would not pair up like this and, and talk. So we also gave you the option to do a Padlet. So today there's gonna to be a couple opportunities to talk or to write or to do a Padlet. So I just want to show you that that's out there. If you go to padlet.com backslash Hester JE, you'll find this Padlet and another one we're going to do later. So that's an option. And again, feel free to learn in the way that's best for you. Here's something. There, there's some in the middle of the table, but so that all of you have um, one of these. Okay. So now we're kind of moving into the why of engagement with the purposeful and motivated. And another significant piece, um, in addition to a student being able to identify their why, they have to be able to articulate their learning stretch. Remember, this is to provide rigor, and we want the student to select a project that is going to challenge that student. So what might be a challenge for you and a learning stretch will be totally different for me and all the way around the table. So a student does have to be able to articulate that learning stretch and identify how uh, the project is going to be rigorous throughout the duration of doing um, this project. And uh, throughout senior projects we do have scaffolding to ensure the student being able to be successful. They do a lot of documentation, they do a lot of writing, they do journaling, they keep a project log to um, show evidence of their project work, and they compile everything in an electronic portfolio. So what we want to do is move forward and share some of, um, some of our students' stories with you. And before I do that, though, just to be aware, the senior projects entail a proposal phase, the project phase, um, a portfolio phase, they write a paper, 
which aligns with their project, and then they give a public presentation. And see all those components, it, it takes a while. It's not like they get up one weekend and say, hey, I'm gonna do my senior project. It's, um, it's very scaffold and it's intentional to keep that engagement and that rigor throughout their senior year. Yes? And, and you had those, those deliverables specified because you wanted your meeting objectives Yes. Yes. Um, everything in our senior project meets our state standards that are required um, for seniors graduating from high school. So that is how we, we put those deliverables together to determine what would be appropriate. So what we have here, this is Kendall. Kendall is a student who graduated just last year and he is a student with autism and for his senior project he wanted to help other people be aware of his disability and what's involved in that and he also is interested in becoming a graphic designer so he took the opportunity for his senior project and he wrote a children's book something's different about andrew and he illustrated it and it is for sale on Amazon. He's been very successful with this. Um, the local newspaper and some of the Indianapolis TV stations got wind of this and they came to school to interview, Andrew, or to interview Kendall. And the very first time his teacher had to be with him to kind of prompt him on the answers and what's appropriate. To this date, Kendall has written two more books and he is giving book talks at our local library. So, and this is all because of Senior Project and this assignment was the springboard to, to really help elevate his interests. And additionally, he is taking graphic design classes at our local community college. So we have found that our senior projects naturally fall into three categories. It's not a requirement, they just do. They either have a community focus, a career focus, or a self-improvement hobby um, area. And so Kendall's in particular, it hit on two of those. It hit on both his um, career interest and then that self-interest. And then uh, another student story that I love to share, this is Taylor, his last name's Shed. Taylor is interested in becoming a marine biologist. That is not the easiest thing in the world to do when you're in the middle of Indiana. <laughs> you, can, you can go to the Indianapolis Zoo and do a job shadow, but doing the behind the scenes with the dolphin encounter is not quite the immersion Taylor was looking for. So Taylor applied to do research at the Whale Research Lab in the San Juan Islands off of the state of Washington. He was accepted to do this internship over the summer before his senior year. And this was, this is, uh, comes full circle. This was back in the year 2011. So um, he went, he charted whale pod movement. He had to keep all his data. He had to compile it. He was invited as a senior in high school to present at an international conference that was held in Monterey Bay, California to share his um, data and the information about whale pod movement. He went on to University of Hawaii. He is a marine biologist. He is back. He is the Sound Watch, Sound is in Puget Sound, boater education program director, making sure people are aware of the whale pods and do's and do nots as far as um, you know what to do when they're out boating in Puget Sound. And there is another student at my school who wants to become a marine, marine biologist and she is very serious. She has applied for the internship with the whale, whale research center. They have accepted her. Taylor is going to be her mentor for her senior project. So that's why I said this has really come full circle. You know, he's lived through it now. We have another student and she will go this summer and do uh, research there. She already will go back during our fall break and spring break next year because remember, immersion throughout the entire year. So that's um, you know, great stories that we love to share. So. This it, it is a very warm feeling. This is another student who happens to have autism named Brandon. 
And Brandon, um, when he got his driver's license, became fearful about how will I handle if I do something wrong or if a policeman pulls me over. So he uh, paired up with the Columbus Police Department and made a self-advocacy self card for students who have disabilities. So they actually now can carry this card. And so when the Columbus Police, if they pull them over for any reason, they present them the card so the policeman knows the best ways to communicate with them. Because how would they know if you just randomly pull over somebody, you're not gonna know that they have a special way they need to communicate. And so it was really cool. Um, you can see here, this is kind of a senior board presentation. Our superintendent is here. He's great about coming to both schools and judging, which is really, we feel very supported. And um, this is Brandon here. And then the newspaper was there. And so Brandon had a lot of growth as a person because he also isn't very social. And so he was able to do interviews with reporters and present in public. And also he was able to um, not allow flashing and picture taking during his presentation to phase him. So he had so much growth from where he started in high school to the senior project. And so I just want you to think about the authenticity of this project for kids, how authentic and real it is, um, the relevance, how this really made a difference in his life, and the value. And so those are some pieces that really stick out. This next project I'm going to talk about, Christy, her project was about recycling. And she was one of the kids that actually didn't know a lot about recycling. So her project kind of had two different pieces to it. And so one piece was learning about recycling. So she actually went to the Bartholomew County Waste Management Center and paired up with Carrie Spurgeon, who's in charge of the education piece there, educating our community about recycling and, and why we should do that. And so she learned all about it. And then she had a fundraiser to raise money. And then she went to Millray Center, where her mentor is involved in Columbus, and she created a whole recycling. They didn't recycle there. She created a whole recycling program for them. So. When I think of this project, I definitely think of engagement. And it, it helped with her. She's very, very bright. So it helped her to have to take her, it, she took her intelligence out into our community. She had to learn to talk to adults in the community. She had to learn to communicate face to face and do email and not just text. Okay, so these are, these are things that our seniors really actually need to know. So this was just a really nice, way to showcase what she learned over four years and that she's going to continue to be a learner because she didn't know about the recycling efforts in our community. Now I think we're going to move into telling you just, uh, we'll just go through the pieces and show you some examples of the pieces. We're going to move through those next. So the students, they start by completing a formal proposal. And the proposal is the what of their senior project. They identify what the project will be, um, the length of time they estimate it will be. If they're doing something every Tuesday and Thursday after school, they include that kind of information. They um, identify what that learning stretch is. Remember, we that is a critical piece in a student's um, proposal and their project being accepted. They identify what they will be writing about for their research paper, which aligns with their topic, their project topic. They identify what type of person would be appropriate to interview for their research paper because they do have to do a personal interview. And then they have to include information on their mentor because every student works with a mentor who guides them through the process, who offers advice, gives them directives. Because remember, this is a stretch. They haven't done anything of this nature. So they, they need to look to an adult who has experience and expertise and can say, okay, here's you know step one, step two, step three. And uh, so they have to include the mentor information on their proposal form. And the proposal and the project being approved is a very coordinated staff effort because the student meets with um, staff members, there's collaborative conversation, and during the course of that conversation, it's determined whether or not that student's project will be accepted and the faculty members have to sign off on accepting that senior project proposal. So I just have a quick question about sure. that. I, I was wondering how you help students choose their project because the ones you talked about are, I mean, they're wonderful, but I wouldn't have thought of that. I mean, how does that, how do you 
Well, a, a lot of students, they can self-identify because they, they have a passion, just like Olivia, she knew. She had a connection with a teacher and she knew she wanted to give back to that teacher. And then um, for those students who are uncertain, we have what we call the Senior Project Opportunity Fair, okay, <laughs> at, at both schools. And the Opportunity Fair is where we have agency representatives come into school with project ideas, like not-for-profit agencies. Yes, uh, we a will. A lot of them are from United Way. Yes, a lot, a lot of, of ours. United Way. We might have people contact us that are oh. wanting to do a STEM project at an elementary right. school, yeah. and they want our seniors to be able to help yeah. them. So mm -hmm. these projects also come to us, yes, and then we do. try really hard to find a fit. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that happens, and then the other thing is then sometimes we just say, "Well, just come to the opportunity fair with your projects." Right. So, and so they the agency reps, they'll throw out their project idea, but they are really good about working with students. Uh, example is Tiffany next. Um, she there's a student, um, Tiffany. She wanted to do a project about um, girls dressing appropriately there and modestly, modest, modestly, but still fashionable. And so she paired up with one of the agencies at the Opportunity Fair, a local thrift store, and they had some other ideas, but she said, here's what I want to do. And they, they collaborated together, and she took clothing from the thrift store. She repurposed it to make it fashionable and updated it. She had a runway fashion show with her friends and people came and paid admission. And after her project, she redonated the clothes she had repurposed and she donated the funds that people paid to participate in and come to her fashion show. So even though there's agency representatives there, they're very willing to work with students. It's not strictly, here's my two ideas. You know, if a student says, hey, can I take this idea? tweak it more than willing to do that yes go ahead I, I just have to say that this gives gives students so much more agency than what many of us had as master's thesis projects <laughs> oh it's whatever my teacher or whatever my professor is into and has been studying for exactly years, <laughs> i'm going to do one of those Exactly. And that is really um, a huge reason we think our senior projects are successful because the students select and it has that relevance and meaning to autonomy. them. Autonomy. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, they have autonomy. Yeah. Complete individual choice and it gives them power. It, it absolutely does. We're yes. really empowering kids mm -hmm. and it feels really great to do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And I thought, isn't that so? I said, like, for this kid who's doing thing on autism, I was like, I'll help you, right? And okay. So I thought that was a really yeah. cool family engagement way. Absolutely. Yeah. So that is a great way. Yeah. Well, if we're, if we're, we've kind of jumped around a little bit, yeah. but yes, I'm going to bring you, no, no, I think that's, that's an important part of learning. This shouldn't be, we can make whatever plan we want, but as learners, if it's not working for you, then that's not a good thing, right? <laughs> oh, I know, but I, I want to be flexible and adjust on the fly. That's what I do. So next we're going to talk real briefly the project and the portfolio pieces. So the project piece is, again, needs to be the learning stretch. And we've showed you several examples, and we have more. We, we may or may not get to all of them, but we have more examples of projects. But basically with the project, we want students to spend 15 to 20 hours on the project. So we, we explain to them that this is a big project. This is showing by four years of education here at your high school that you're an expert learner. And when I have students who, you know, kind of, Occasionally, there's one or two that may come to me and say, hey, explain to me, you know, I do all these projects, I'm in five AP classes, my SAT score is 1500, and so my answer is this is your opportunity to showcase what you've learned for four years. This is huge. This is, this is your opportunity, this is your assessment of yourself for four years. So that's really what the project is. And the portfolio is really the place to house all your evidence in your work. 
And so Anne uses Google Sites, which is really right. awesome. So you see this example is kind of the cover page on Google Sites yes. with the beautiful picture. And then she has several tabs there parts and where everything's located it's really easy to navigate I use its learning because that's our course management system and so I had an assistant principal say hey this is free the kids are using this there were not portfolio there were no electronic portfolios when I came in so kids were carrying around these binders and you can imagine I'd say show me your portfolio I need to do a check-in mm -hmm. and they would say Mrs. Hester, it's in my car. <laughs> Mrs. Hester, I left it at my mom's house and I'm not going there till next week because this is my week at my dad's. And so you could see the problems with helping kids with time management piece when I have no way of knowing what's done and what's not done. I don't know how to help them manage their time because I don't even know what my reality is. And so the electronic portfolio did that for me because it has the pieces and we have a checklist and so we can manage what pieces they have finished and then I pull in the kids that I need to pull in instead of wondering in my head, does this student with this binder, you know, is it really done at home or is it not really done at home? It's Learning does offer a cool messaging tool for me too where I can message kids. So it's like texting but with your course management system so it's a little bit more professional. For me anyways, the students are still pretty much using it as texting. But it's a good way to communicate with them because they check it, mm -hmm. because they're not always checking their email. But the portfolio is where all the documentation and, as Jen said, all the evidence, that is where it's housed. Mm -hmm. And it also serves a dual purpose in addition to, okay, here's everything in one spot. Our judges, uh, prior to the student presentations, they read through those portfolios. So they know what the student's project is, how much work they put in on it, what their research paper was. There's journaling in there, which details every, uh, everything that the student did to get the project completed. So it's a nice uh, reflective it, piece. It's a very, for a yeah, very reflective piece. And the students work. Um, it, they're doing this documentation throughout their, again, throughout the senior project duration. So then when they're finished, all goes into that electronic portfolio and the judges read through it prior to their presentation. And I know you just finished with your research paper component recently, right? So yes. that takes us into that step of yes. the research paper. Yes, and the research paper, every senior has to write a research paper prior to graduating. So we decided to align it with the senior project and they do write uh, an argumentative paper that is related to the actual project. And they write that through their English class. Yes. And there's a mm -hmm. tremendous amount of scaffolding as far as helping the students get that project or their paper written. They learn how to build an argument and um, you know to show evidence of supporting their thesis. So this is another significant part of their overall educational journey. Right, not an official mentor, but in a way a mentor. Yes. So the, the, just the deliverables are research paper? Right. And, and portfolio. Argumentative it's argumentative. And then the portfolio is a deliverable. And then this is the next in wrapping up the pieces, the, the presentation the is presentation. the last deliverable. And so this student did her presentation we're having. So this is a great example of how it all and ties in project. together. This student is excited about the 150th year celebration at our school. And so she worked with our alumni association and she did interviews. So we had people from the ages of, they just graduated from Columbus North, so early 20s, all the way up to people in their 70s plus some veterans, all kinds of different people came in and she did this interviews because she's going to make a video for the celebration. And so this is a piece of her, the picture I just snagged it was from her presentation. But the presentation piece is where the student is in front of a board with five people. So there's community members and teachers on this board and the student presents for roughly 10 minutes and it is their final assessment piece. And when they're done, the thing that Ann and I love watching them do is ring the bell. Mm -hmm. The celebration. We have the Bella Champions mm -hmm. at my school. I, that's what I was looking so, for, the Bella um, Champions. I forgot what you so called it. So when the student is finished, they're not just walking out like, okay, well, I'm finished. 
there's a celebration at our schools. We, um, as Jen said, they ring the bell. We have cookies and lemonade. Um, Slide shows. <clears throat> their, their parents are there. Mm -hmm. Their mentors may come to watch. And it, it's a true celebration. And it's a, it's a really big deal. And at um, my school, the presentations, yes, mm -hmm. the, yes. Those are that, the bells. Yeah, Jen's school is on the left, the Bulldogs and the uh, Bell of Champions. That's one of um, one of my students and our school principal. They get their picture taken with the, the principal. And um, it's a great celebration. And there's a camaraderie where the students are there to congratulate each other. Their parents are there. So it's really a fun day. And it's Really, um, at my school, it's right before the students are finished for the year. And they only have like two or three days of school left. And so they are, they are very relieved when they come out of their presentation. Sometimes it's tears of happiness. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, oh my goodness, I've made it. So, but it is a really big deal. So. So next we're kind of moving into our relationship piece with the mentors. And we did touch on this. But um, your chopsticks, you notice you have a variety of things at your table. Your chopsticks are to motivate you to be intentional about finding a student or someone you work with and finding the spark in them. So finding how you can engage them and make them a better person. Um, we're doing a lot with social and emotional learning in BCSC and talking about development and relationships. And so this video is, um, it comes from the Search Institute. It's about a teacher named Mr. Jensen. And I think with senior projects, this is, it's important that Ann and I look at these kids and we find how can we get them excited about education and to keep engaged and then to go on to the next level. And so this is a very motivational video, it's short. And then I'd like you to write on those chopsticks somebody's name that maybe you can make a difference in their life or be, find their spark. And so we'll see what this little boy's spark is here. So again, those deliverables, the project itself, the portfolio, um, the paper, and the presentation. And, and they start with the proposal. <clears throat> I have a lot of memories from when I was a child. One that's always stuck out to me though was when I was about 10 years old and I was in school and I struggled. And I, I didn't struggle with English, math, or science. I struggled holding still. And I would try to listen and focus and process ideas, but I couldn't help myself. And to be honest, I would sit there and then I would just start tapping. And the students in the class would look at me and they'd say, hey, stop tapping. A lot of the time, I didn't even realize I was doing it. And then eventually even the teachers got after me and they would yell at me and they'd say, Clint, you have to stop tapping. It got so bad that I got sent to the principal's office for tapping. And he said to me, okay, maybe when you go back to class, just try sitting on your hands. And so I did, I went back to class and when I felt myself starting to tap, I just, I did this, I sat on my hands. And that worked for about five seconds. <laughs> One time I was tapping in class and my teacher, Mr. Jensen, he looked at me and he yelled. And he said, Clint, stay after class. And I thought to myself, this is it, I am done. Now I've always been the type of person that believes that a single moment in time can change a person's life. And this was one of those moments for me and I will never forget it. And so I was sitting there with Mr. Jensen and an empty classroom. And he walked past me and he sat next to his desk and he said, Clint, come here, I wanna talk to you. And as he looked me right in the eye, he said, now, I need you to know something, you're not in trouble. But I do have just one question that I have to ask you. And he asked, he said, have you ever thought about playing the drums? And in that moment, Mr. Jensen, he leaned back and he opened the top drawer of his desk. And he reached in and he pulled out my very first pair of drumsticks. And he held them in his hands and he looked at me and he said, hey Clint, you're not a problem. I think you're in trouble. From that moment on, I've never put those sticks down. I've told
toured, recorded, and played drums all over the world. My whole college education was paid for with drum sticks in my hand. Just because of a single moment in time when somebody believed in me, and he saw something in me that I didn't even see within myself. And from that moment, I learned that there's a difference between being the best in the world and being the best for the world. You never know what that spark's going to be. Um, with our senior projects, there's a lot of um, community support and engagement and involvement and a really big piece of it is the mentor. And the, as I stated earlier, the, the mentor offers guidance to the student and uh, verifies the project work and also is available for consultation. And uh, we do have, um, oh, sorry. No, 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 you're fine, you're fine. I'll just tell them what it is and then they Good. can maybe do it in a few minutes or on your own, the Padlet that I told you about earlier. So the big thing about this that I guess to think about is who was the Mr. Jensen in your life? If you close your eyes and you think for a minute, who was that person? And how did they mentor you? Because this senior project, Social and emotional learning is one of my favorite things, so I guess I should just be clear about that. But, <laughs> but how, how wonderful if senior projects do this for even one child a year or 10 children a year that were able to find their spark in education and motivate them to be a better person and to be able to learn and stay engaged and find their passion. And so I just, I just think this mentor piece and the relationships that come out of senior projects are so very important. And so that's why I'm so passionate about sharing senior projects with other people because I have seen, maybe it's not documented beautifully like the Mr. Jensen video, but I have seen these things happen for children. And you've, we've given you some examples. We maybe haven't been as eloquent, well, Anne has, as the video. But we hope that we've shown you some, some stories and some authenticity about what these projects can do for kids. So I'm not going to make you do the Padlet. I want you to know it's there and it's an opportunity for you. It's an option. I like to give options. So we're moving into the community relationship and mentor piece. And I'll let Anne tell you... Um, I don't know some of the requirements, and she has some different forms that are available, and maybe for the sake of time after she tells you about this, I right. could maybe, if you want them, um, share them. Sure. We could we share them. You could take our business cards yeah. and email us. Would that be okay? Absolutely. Because I'm speaking without, this is on the fly here. We yeah. didn't rehearse this. Yeah. Okay. So the whole community piece and community engagement has been in place with senior projects from day one. Remember, thinking back to that community education coalition, those business and industry leaders and educational leaders all getting together, and there is support from the community that um, shows evidence that they are truly a part of the community and as Jen mentioned earlier we get calls frequently from um, people saying hey we have a great senior project idea or can you identify a student who can um, help out with this project so that community piece is really critical to the success of senior projects and one of those of course is the whole mentor piece the student self identifies a mentor and because they are self-identifying the mentor we do have some requirements we want to make sure the mentor has some experience and expertise to guide the student because the student hasn't done this before and they need somebody who can say here's step one here's step two here's step three we want the mentor to be at least 21 years of age we don't want students working with a peer we don't want students working with um, someone who's a relative we don't want a parent we don't want a boyfriend or girlfriend, even if they're age 21, and you know that's up there because it's, because it's happened. That's why it's one of the rules. Um, and they do need to have the ability to communicate electronically and a valid working email because a lot of their communication with us does come electronically. The mentors complete checkpoints along the way. Well, they start by filling out a verification form. Yes, I'm going to mentor this student. Yes, I'm willing to meet with them.
I'm willing to fill out the checkpoints. And the checkpoints are to help um, us as well as the English teachers, because my students do senior projects through English, and um, it helps know whether or not the student is staying on track, if they are communicating with the mentor, if they are following through, if there's suggestions that the mentor has, and that's all done on Google. And so I send that out on a link and they respond and it comes back to me. And then they do a final verification which states, yes, this student did work on this for X amount of hours. They have totally completed the project and um, I'm verifying that the, the student did the work. So that's a very significant part because there's no way Jen or I could get to every single senior project. Like right now, I am working with 275 seniors and there's no way I could get to, you know, every senior project that's taking place or every event or go out to witness what they're doing. So that's the, the critical connection point with mentors, okay? So this is what the, the checkpoint looks like. And, and then, there are four checkpoints on a, a monthly basis. And, the, I and then this is the final verification, or the mentor verification. This is what they fill out to start, to say, yes, I'm going to be well, I'm going to work with this student. And then the final verification, um, as far as, yes, the students completed all their work for this. Did you say four times a month? No, four, four. Throughout the year? Yes. Well, they do the, the verification very first, and then there's four checkpoints, December, January, February, March, and then the final verification is due in April. The project hours are due mid-April, and then that's when the final verification is due as well. So there's fairly consistent communication with the mentors. Okay, and we've talked about the opportunity mm -hmm. fair, and um, this, this is Tiffany. We mm -hmm. talked about Tiffany and her repurposing the, the clothes. And then um, Love Chapel and Turning Point are just two more examples. We won't spend a long time. I did, I think I pulled up their websites here. I'll show you. But Love Chapel, and I'm going to tell you this because when I told my mom I was excited about senior projects and I shared with my mom Love Chapel, and she said, what is Love Chapel? And she, in her mind, she was picturing a wedding chapel in Las Vegas where you get married. And why are we raising this large sum of money, over $25,000 for a wedding chapel? And so I had to explain it's an ecumenical connection of churches in Columbus and they provide all these services like they'll pay for prescription medicines for families they'll provide hot meals they have a huge food pantry in Columbus and so we have a senior project that is actually a line item in their budget mm -hmm. so twenty five thousand dollars plus a year these students raise by 5k on turkey day <laughs> planning a large yeah. event and so that one is kind of a North tradition, and then an East tradition is East, Turning Point and turning, a dance marathon. Right. And you can tell them how much money because I don't want to mess that up, right. but um, it's a large amount. Yeah, Turning Point is our local domestic violence shelter. And when we started senior projects with the class of 2000, there was a student who said, I want to do something to help the local domestic violence shelter. And her mentor, she knew she wanted to work with a local doctor, and um, the doctor said, you know, when I was at IU, Indiana University, we had a dance marathon and we raised a lot of money and I think it was for March of Dimes or something like that. She said, how about if we start a high school dance marathon? And so the student was like, perfect. That's exactly the kind of thing that I want to do. So she got this dance marathon organized and all, you know, number of kids from just my school at that time came. They raised $25,000 the very first year, and everybody was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome, this is amazing. Let's fast forward to this current year. It is still a senior project. There's always a senior who organizes it because you always have to um, solicit for prizes and make sure there's a DJ and there's food. So it's always a new experience for the student who is organizing Dance Marathon. It's always held in February. This year it was held February 23rd. They grossed $170,000, netted $140,000 for Turning Point. So now I can it say is a line, line item. To pick, it's a line item and the line to pick up your student, because my daughter was there, <laughs> was very long at the end of the marathon. So yes. I can, I can mm -hmm. say that there is proof that there were so many of our students from both of both. our high schools and Hauser, which yeah, is very small in our county. In our county. Mm -hmm. So, and with that really one, cool. 
that's, um, you know, we just, we get contacted all the time about, hey, we have project ideas, and it's part of the community. Truly, senior projects are. Okay, so this is just, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but one of the things when I think about UDL is that there's so many ways students can express themselves and communicate with senior projects. So that's just a really nice piece because some of our kids, and they use different, also they use different tools while they're doing their senior projects. So these are some of the tools and things that they use. Um, so television, we had the boy whose project I, I talked about earlier, he was on Fox 59 talking about his suicide awareness video that he made and some of the programming he did to raise awareness in our county for prevention of suicide and recognition of signs and symptoms. Sometimes, sometimes they use guest speakers, so one senior project was bringing in a nationally known guest speaker to talk and have a huge event around that. Sometimes social media is used with the students to communicate they're gonna have an event, or they may create an app that is useful for one of these agencies. A lot of them create websites for the different agencies. Sometimes they'll go to a nursing home and have classes for the residents of the nursing home to learn how to use Facebook and Twitter and Instagram because they wanna stay in touch with their family and they don't know how. Radio, they oftentimes announce, you'll hear about Columbus East Senior Project, Columbus North Senior Project right on the radio, and they advertise for their project or just talk about it. And our newspaper, The Republic, is very involved. It's on the front page. Different projects are on the front page all the time. Yes. It's very common. Mm -hmm. And so our community has had a lot of buy-in yes. with senior projects, so it, it's really it's really authentic in our community. And we're very fortunate to have that support, and we know that. Yes, we're very, very aware. So this is, this is another one I'll tell you about, and this is how authentic this is. This student has epilepsy, and they don't know the why for her, and they weren't sure she was going to be able to graduate, so they put her on homebound. And so we had to come up with a senior project that fit her. And so what she ended up doing, and her mom cried when she told me about this, she, she is doing education and training for elementary age students about what epilepsy is and how her service dog works with her. And so what you can do as an elementary age kid when you come across a service dog, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and she brings her service dog in. And so it, it really brings tears to my eyes. It's just a really... It's why we do senior projects, this type of project, because this is so relevant for her. She's homebound. She can't come to school. Her reality is she doesn't know when she's going to have a seizure. This dog has become very important to her, and she's able to tie all this together and educate elementary kids. So it's just a really, a really beautiful, meaningful piece of school, to, a meaningful way to assess our kids. Um, we also give the kids lots of tools. Anne has an excellent brochure that she puts out for all the kids. She does education with her parents that are coming right. to be seniors, and I do education with my parents. In either April or August, they change it up on me every, <laughs> every year, but I know I'm going to be doing it. And then we both have websites that the kids can use as tools. And one of the cool things I'm going to show you that actually was a senior project and I'm looking for more. I think this year we're going to have a Vietnamese translation, I'm hoping. But you can see right now I have Spanish and Japanese. And so the forms used to do senior projects, we can translate those into different languages to remove barriers for kids that aren't native English speakers. Because sometimes a kid comes in, it's very hard as a senior and they've been living in Japan their whole life, and now they're a senior at our high school with this graduation requirement. So this is um, one of a, sen one a senior project was we had a Japanese student that it was really difficult for him when he came in, and he wanted to give back. He wanted to do something for students in his position who came to school. And the beautiful thing is, out of the complete randomness of life, I had someone from the West Coast email our principal and ask if they could use those, Jap those forms. So they're, so they're out there in space somewhere being used by somebody else, but I'm so, uh, that makes me so happy that our senior project in Columbus, Indiana is making a difference in California. So that's kind of a cool piece. But both of our websites have all these tools for kids, and she ta Anne talked a lot about scaffolding. So we just want you to know that we don't just say do a senior project, right. that we do have all <laughs> these things in place. And we, we're very busy on the organizational behind the scenes. Absolutely. And yes.
Okay. And then we just kind of have a poll. If you have time, I would like you to do um, this poll. Just kind of how likely are you to implement, not necessarily the whole senior project, but c did you learn anything today? Was this useful? Was this helpful? Do you have some takeaways? I would just like to see if you could do that for me. So I'm not sure why it's not popping up. You know, and just think about but, your learning environment yeah. and if there's any piece of this that would make sense for you. You know, you may not um, be the decision maker to say, hey, every single senior is going to do this, but maybe there's something that you could do in your learning environment with a group of students to help them find that spark to really be successful and shine in a way that sometimes um, students don't have the opportunity to until they are making decisions on what they're going to learn and choosing how they go about learning it. And so we have, we have this for you. We also have post-it notes that are sticking on the wall due to some push pins. Yeah. But if you want to write anything there, if you want to write on your table, if you want to write in your book, post-it note, whatever you want to do, I just, we, we just kind of want to see what you could take away from this, what piece you could implement or concept that you can implement into your life in whatever professional area you're working in, because I know everyone is different. Also, feel free again to take the chopsticks if that, that'll motivate you to be a spark for someone else. And we also have an exit ticket, which you can do one of two ways. Yeah, there's a paper copy right in front of you. Or, or you can do an electronic this is a link, but it's a lot to type in. Google would let me shorten the URL, but they wouldn't let me give it a code name. So I, I kind of fought with that. But there's a paper copy, too, on your desk. So either way, um, your exit ticket asks about what you may take away as well. Seniors that are post-secondary. Oh, yes, a mm -hmm. good 60% of our seniors mm -hmm. attend I mean, post-secondary. Oh. Post we do have some who attend the local community college for some classes, yes. Every single senior does a senior project. If they're going to receive a BCSC diploma, mm -hmm. they do a senior project, yes. And as Jen mentioned earlier, I mean, from our Victorian to students with multiple um, disabilities, right? yes. yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cognitive, physical, yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, I would love that. Yes, yes. We're working with we're working with the Department of Education in our state of Indiana. We're trying to work to make senior projects a piece of a graduation pathway because from our perspective, it's a much better way to assess kids than some standardized testing that we use right now that kids really struggle with. And so I believe, please don't quote me on this, but I believe we're going to be possibly presenting and working with. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh. Oh, that's exciting. I'm so glad. Yes. Yes, exactly. I think that's, I think yeah. that's a beautiful piece. And you know, it's interesting. A lot of times students will come in my office or a parent will call and say, what can my child, what are the, the things they can pick from? And I'm, I say, you know what, on my website, we have a list of things that will not be approved. Otherwise, it's easier to say it is wide open because it is. Mm -hmm. The students will have their own great ideas as far as what they want to do. And it, yeah, it's easier to have a succinct list of, we want to prove this, we want to prove whatever, based on 
prior experiences we've had with students maybe trying to do some senior projects. Like one of them on my list is no skydiving. And most people automatically go to, oh yeah, we don't want kids getting hurt, which we don't. But the reality is, you go, you take like an hour skydiving class, you jump out of the plane and then you're finished. And it's, it does not afford all the hours that are required for senior projects. So as I said, the list of what won't be approved is based on, oh gosh, we did that and that didn't work so well. So, um, but it is wide open as far as what students. Yeah, so at the end, we, we assess slightly differently, but both use Google, do you use Google? Yes. Okay, yes. so we both use Sheets. And so basically for me, while the kids are presenting, judges are putting in scores on a computer and then it's all fed to me. So I can give them their certificate and shake their hand and let them celebrate. So it's a pretty instantaneous feedback system. Right. So, and then we can track. So in terms of purposeful and motivated, resourceful and knowledgeable and strategic and goal-directed learners, we can assess which of those three areas our school needs to improve in because it'll, it'll tell me which of those, which students, not which students, but a percentage score so I can see where we need to work as a whole school. So um, when I made the rubric, I connected it to the UDL framework and also to our school-wide learning outcomes. And so we, we use that rubric and then the Google Sheets dissects it and, and that's how all the data comes in and then I can look at it to see. Now at, well, I'm sorry, the rubric? Mm -hmm. Now at my school, senior projects are actually part of the English curriculum. It is 50% of the second semester English grade. Students receive a grade for the paper, the physical project, the portfolio, and the presentation. And as Jen mm -hmm. said, the presentations are basically, we use the same form, mm -hmm. but um, we use Google as well for those paper grades, um, the portfolio grades, the presentation, and um, it's all broken down by individual categories and we can look at that data and um, we frequently, after the paper grades come in, we can look at it and say, we got to improve those transitions. We, we keep working on those transitions and then the next year we might, you know, really do well with transitions and we see another area where we're a little deficit and the teachers are really working on that. So, um, yes, we definitely do assessment and we, we gather data and we've been keeping data now since a number of years. So we do have that to look back on. It's a really great professional development tool for yes. our staffs. So it's another tie-in. Yes. How can we be better teachers as a result of the feedback from the work we do? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I love what you're giving learners to launch them into the world. It's like a sense of themselves as an expert learner. Right? Yes. Exactly. Exactly. I also want to say that it sounds so dynamic that as I was sitting here, I was like, how could, how could this happen in middle school? Like, I imagine some learners go, wow, I wish I paid attention in class. Like, I, now that I've done this, I'm engaged. How could we do some mini seventh grade, mini senior project thing that then is a catalyst? You know to what to like, what I know in. one of our middle schools does that. Yes. Because yes. I, when my daughter went through as an eighth grader, we went and... I listen, so they do it different, and it is many, okay, but at the middle school, what they do is they give them a project, and I think there's just five to ten hours of time, and so my daughter organized a dance for um, a group of people that lived at, it's called Developmental Services, and so the clients that live there, she organized the Valentine's Day dance, and so then what those kids have to do is middle school kids, they go to the Commons, which is a big, big rented space, and have basically a big poster board, mm -hmm. and then they invite the parents and the community right. you can walk through, and the kids actually talk to you, and you interact with the middle school kids. I met a kid who told me all about his chef, chef uncle, and <laughs> I, it's really cool, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank well, you. we appreciate yeah, your thank attendance. You. Thank you so okay, much. Thank you very much.